Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, um, thank you all for being here. What I um, wanted to do today is that um, I'm going to be trying to piece several things together. Um, in terms of us in the US, we're dealing, of course, with climate change events, particularly California has been battered by these, um, uh, what they call atmospheric rivers, uh, on top of all the snow they had in Northern California, a lot of places now are being flooded. 10 million people are under either, or have been flooded or under flood watch um, across the state. Um, it's just, everything is like, look, a brown muddy mess because a lot of places that had, there were at 3000 feet elevation that had snows that were up to five to seven inches, everything is melted. And it has caused rapid floods in valleys and lower areas and people have lost. And I hope that they, they have um, um, flood insurance because that's an additional insurance to your homeowner insurance that you need to take. And, uh, and they are, they are in, a, in a bad state, okay? Uh, in addition to that, we have other things that are going on around the world. And the thing that I want to talk about today, and it relates to the WESOC in an opposite vibration to the WESOC theme. And that theme is aligning to the flow of abundant living. So it's the opposite frequency to what I'm going to talk about now, which is that um, Silicon Valley Bank, uh, SVB in California, uh, on Friday was shut down by the FDIC. Uh, and there's a lot of reasons and explanation and people, uh, and they have four other banks that did exactly the same, use the same models and the same kind of business model that have, that are all also being watched by the FDIC, okay? And companies. Uh, I just saw is, uh, something by uh, um, uh, Cheryl Porter, who's the congressman from California. She heard from the FDIC members last night, she says, and she understand better what actually happened on the bank. And the reason I'm mentioning this is because in the channeling from December and from many other astrologers, there is to be a financial restructuring of the world. And it will be, according to the channeling I had, it was 2024, it might be off by several months, but according to an astrologer, Vedic astrologer that I know, it was March, April of this year. And of course, it turns out to be true that, and if this is the first domino, it's gonna create a ripple effect. What they are claiming is that the way bank do business, when, uh, this, by the way, Silicon Valley uh, Bank uh, um, uh, took care of Silicon Valley uh, startups, companies, um, uh, et cetera, et cetera, in, um, in and around California, and it's actually a very large bank. They have assets in, into the millions and billion, billions of dollars. So they have large companies and depositors that are coming in that are financing their payroll out of that. So when you have a lot of money, the way the bank operates, if you have $500,000 or a million dollar you deposit in the bank, the bank does not keep the, five, the million dollar in the vault. They take that money, they invest it into something else. Sometimes they lend it out. Sometimes they actually invest it in securities, in US treasuries, in other things. I am understanding that there's a whole section that was, this is being rumored, that was invested in crypto. And the problem may have been that crypto, there was a crypto drop, there was a crypto downfall, and therefore the bank didn't have the asset. Now, when the, um, the wealthy uh, Silicon Valley companies realized that this was happening, they demanded their money and the bank defaulted because they didn't have the cash on hand. They had asset in terms of treasury and all that stuff, but they couldn't sell them. If you take a US treasury, it's a 10 year bond and you're locked in for 10 years, you can't access it. 
So the best case scenario tomorrow is that if the bank opens, because the FDIC only insure account of the tournament fifty thousand dollars, and let's say you had an account that had hundred thousand or million dollars, you only get two hundred fifty thousand dollars tomorrow. So the idea, as uh, 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 Representative uh, uh, Congressman Porter was saying, is that she would love to see a bigger bank, another buyer come in and buy the assets and save the bank. Okay because they are not, the, the federal government, the, the Fed will not bail them out. Uh, I'm saying this because there are other banks that have the same business model. Uh, part of the trigger as well had to do with the fact that the federal government, the Fed had been raising interest rate. So when they took the treasuries out, they were at a very low rate. The rates have gone up two points. Yes, they were supposed to go up next Tuesday again. And if they keep raising it and it keeps going up, they are losing money. And therefore, uh, you know, uh, um, it's kind of a weird space for the banking institution to be in. Everybody is betting and edging on something else, including the banking institution. And this is why it needs to be recalibrated. It's not a one-to-one -one ratio where if you deposit your money in the bank, the money is sitting on the vault. It's, it, this is not the world we're living in. The bank is taking the money and making money from it, your money and making money from it by investing it, either by loaning it to somebody else or by investing it into other things, including cryptocurrency, which is highly unstable. Uh, so this is where we are. And um, um, I don't know if this is the first domino, um, that will cause other bank like on contagion to also begin to default. Um, it, it probably won't affect any of you, but if um, I know somebody that works in one of those banks that are being watched, and uh, according to them, this is a family friend, according to the private conversation, um, um, uh, people that have account that have $3 million are asking for all their money immediately. And you can imagine the bank scrambling now, trying to sell assets so that they can have the money available. People who work in the banking industry will tell you the money is not in the bank. They have a little bit of cash to handle you know, regular transaction, this one more than 4,000, 5,000, that kind of thing. But the big money and the millions, it, it's not in the vault, it, it's not there. If anything, they have to schedule it, you know, a week, two weeks you know, before you can actually access it, right? Uh, and this is what uh, people who have a lot of money, this is why they work with pr uh, private bankers um, because they want to schedule these. If they want to move large sum, they have to, they have to schedule it ahead of time because the bank have to secure it. If they don't have the asset, they have to sell asset, um, uh, whether it is they invested in something and then get that money and secure it for the client who's trying to get their money back. Um, and they, the point of the channeling was that there was going to be a, a domino effect of events that was going to create such crises that it, will call, it was going to cause a restructuring of the entire financial system. And as it turned out, by the year 2025, 2026, into a more equitable and uh, distributive system uh, uh, for everyone. Okay. Uh, but for the people who have a lot of asset, it will feel like a loss. We have an old proverb back in the Caribbean that says about fall, about loss, particularly loss of money or loss of anything, that if I'm sitting in a low chair close to the ground, I don't have fall to fall. But because you're sitting in an ivory tower, your fall will be much harder than I. Or something like that. If I could lose something in the translation, but you understand what, I'm, what the analogy is. That for those people who are already poor, who have like a few hundred dollars in the bank, if a bank fault, a default or all that, it's a loss. They're going to miss their money, but it's not a catastrophic loss. But if you have $2 million in the bank and the bank defaulted and you can only get from FDIC insurance $250,000, that's a huge loss. That's a huge loss. That's, that, that's a million and three quarters loss. So, so it's, a, it's, it's a big thing, 
for 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 people to put them to wrap their mind around, particularly the people who are holding big CDs with a lot of money. And I'm saying this because I'm going to piggyback on a conversation we had about two weeks ago about abundance and flow, and how uh, uh, the idea of abundance and flow is a um, is uh, and people who have a lot of money that it is not theirs. If you recall, I had stated that from the standpoint of where flow really, uh, where abundance really come from, it's not just about green back and money you have in the bank. It's about a state of consciousness. And that state of consciousness is key to everything. That the people who are truly opulent always seem to have the golden touch, everything they touch becomes magically transformed into prosperity, abundance, and et cetera. And, 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 and uh, um, these individuals are connected to something. And that something is coming from the divine feminine aspect, which is in, um, uh, in Indian literature is Lash, Lakshmi, uh, uh, the goddess of um, uh, abundance and flow, but it's not just money. And I, and I'm, 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 I, I have to keep emphasizing it. It's not about money. It's a state of consciousness that connects you to specifically to um, 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 uh, um, um, for example, knowledge, abundance of knowledge, uh, abundance of life, abundance of um, joy, abundance of of, uh, um, um, uh, of of being in a rich community, and et cetera, et cetera. So. When any of the channels are blocked, let's say, for example, you're somebody that, that have problem, and this is something that's personal to me because I, that's a problem I'm, I have been struggling with for years. I'm not in that space anymore, but I have struggled with it for years where you have problem receiving, okay? And because you have problem receiving, you're, you're stuck in that, that um, I, I can't receive from the world because, you know, if I take from the world, that means somebody else is going to lose. You don't understand that the universe in infinity times infinity, there is no end to abundance. It's not a limited resource. That abundance that I'm talking about, it's infinity times infinity. It's perpetually growing. It's not a limited amount. And I had stated also that all of the money that exists in the world, all the gold, the sapphire, the diamonds, all the financial resources, whether it's Elon Musk, whether it is uh, Warren Buffett or, or, or Jeff Bezos, uh, 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 all the, the, the royal families from uh, 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 the oil rich countries to the, 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 the English royal families, all of that fortune is not theirs. It belongs to that one place that's con that's that is the source of all abundance. It's not theirs. It doesn't belong to any of them. And until you can get that in your head, and more importantly, the people who own who are abundant right now in terms of financial resources, they are nothing more than the temporary custodian of that flow. Make the round move think differently, exist in lack in your awareness, or be hoarding what you own like this, like a snap of a finger, it's going to disappear from you. Okay? And I, 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 will, I will hasten to say that the people that I'm noticing now um, uh, that are also struggling, the people, for example, from as, as, um, SVB Bank, uh, that are you know, losing all of their assets. I feel sorry for for the uh, uh, businesses in the corporations who cannot make payroll because you know uh, uh, all of a sudden their money that had been they had in the bank disappear, and they don't they're not sure if they're going to make payroll for next week for the employees or you know that they have either in California or outside of California if it's in a, a broader wider co a corporation like a, a tech corporation or, or, or um, um, you know, or, or a startup corporation. A lot of venture capital money was flowing through that bank. And, 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 and the part that no one is talking about yet is the part that had to do with crypto, edging on crypto, because crypto is insecure and it's highly unstable. And if this corporate, if the bank had invested in crypto, 
and, and thinking that they could get a quick return and then it just dipped, that's a problem because you can get wiped out overnight in, in, in crypto investment, okay? So anyway, I, I wanted to bring that the awareness that, that, that the idea of abundance and flow is not, you know, God give it, God take it away. So the people who are abundant today, tomorrow, and they, they may feel entitled in all kinds of ways, in a, in a snap of a finger, overnight, God can take it all away. Because Thursday, as Levy Bank was fine, on Friday, it was in default of $1 billion and the, uh, the uh, FDIC had to take over and close the bank. It happened overnight like this. This is a perfect illustration of what I, I was talking about uh, two weeks ago, which is that idea that flow is a consciousness. It's not the bank per se or the banking institution, but it's connecting to directly to an awareness that as of right, I am connected to abundance. And I don't mean just money. Of course, money is part of it. You need money to live in this world. You need to have good things around you. Lashmi and, and, and uh, the Divine Mother wants you to be opulent, to live comfortably, not to suffer, to eat to take vacation, to be prosperous financially, but also for you to also have health, abundant health, for you to be youthful, for you to have abundant living, to have love, to have peace, to have serenity, to have joy, to have knowledge, to have wisdom, all of this. There are 10 different aspects that Lashmi uh, uh, it can provide you abundance for. So here we are now with a, uh, um, a, a uh, an example of 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 of, um, of a group of people and corporations who are now completely. The one day they had all the money in the bank, and the next day. They don't know if that money will exist. If, if because supposedly tomorrow morning that Silicon Valley Bank will reopen, and um, uh, uh, the depositors can go and pick up their money up to two hundred fifty thousand dollars. As for the people who have millions and millions in that, uh, that, that those banks, we don't know what's going to happen to those those funds. They're probably lost. Because if they were edging on, if the bank was edging on crypto, was uh, was investing on crypto, it means that the crypto uh, uh, currency, when the market dips, sometime overnight, it can dip thirty points in a ma matter of moment. Okay, you're making thousands, millions, and etc. And in, 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 in second, it it's, it dips down, and when it dips, when the money is gone, it's gone. Like everything else, they're telling you in the financial world, particularly stock market related, it's buy low, sell high. But you know, uh, uh, a lot of people who are savvy investors in the stock market, they invest long term into what they feel are secure investments. Crypto is not a secure investment right now; it's too unstable. So I'm, I, I want you to be aware of this. Uh, uh, um, and if you have done, not done some research, do a couple of more research, watch a couple of videos on YouTube about this that's happening right now. Um, um, uh, to, to, you know, most people, most individuals are not at risk yet, but certainly certain uh, mice, what I'm gonna do tomorrow, the little bit of money that I have in the bank right now, I'm gonna take it out. I'm gonna leave a couple of, a few hundred dollars. Okay, uh, this is me. Okay, because one of the banks that I'm dealing with is one of the banks that that that's being watched. So I'm I'm gonna go tomorrow, and I'm and I'm doing this in, because one of my banks is on the on the list. I'm gonna I'm gonna just just remove, leave a, a few hundred dollars and remove the, whatever. It's it's not much money, but I don't want to go to the stress of waiting 
for FDIC for something to close to reopen for me to get my money. Okay, I don't want to, to, to exist in the drama. Just to be cautious, leave a little bit of cash in your home. Okay, just a little bit of cash. In the event that something happened, at least you have something to fall secure on. Any questions, any comments you may have? Now, I had said to you earlier that the theme for WESOC, because by the way, I sense that this theme about financial security is gonna be running through the rest of the year. And the frequency and the vibration that I got as the theme for WESOC was so clear at the moment I began to focus on it, it's alignment to the flow of abundant living. We were talking before we started recording about youthfulness and how uh, one can be disconnected to youthfulness because of hard living, because of living in lack. You could have money in the bank, but you could exist in lack. I've had experiences in my life where I met with people and I knew people who were very wealthy because of the school I went to. Plus one babies, Mayflower, uh, blue blood families, a lot of money, but they were so miserly. And so, and I was a work study student and I was richer than them in terms of my consciousness because I was much more generous. Whereas for them, they were pinching pennies and being extremely poor for somebody who was that for, I'm not thinking of one specific experience. And I've shared this before where this, this colleague of mine, this other student, was always making tea and then when we went to eat and never eating anything. and taking aluminum foil to fold the tea bag to take it back with him. And I, I'm always wondering, why is he doing this? Is he that hungry, that poor? And I, I offered when I got my stipend, uh, and again, I was on grants and, and, and financial aid. When I got my stipend, I, 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 I'm sure he, he got into the school. I, I went to an um, Ivy League school. He got into the school probably by his, I don't know that for a fact, maybe probably, by his parents' connection, or his parents just writing a, um, um, a uh, what do you call this, uh, a giving of a high donation to the, to the school. He didn't have to worry about money. Money was never an issue for him. And yet I, I ended up buying him a cheeseburger, but one day because I felt so sorry for him. And, and it was not till the next year when we, we had a, uh, he invited us to his apartment that, I had never seen anything so opulent in my entire life. I went to this building on Park Avenue. We, we came in. It was a private elevator, private elevator into the penthouse. And it was literally the entire floor, the entire footprint of the building with wraparound terrace all around it. 18 rooms. I've never seen anything in my, my entire life like this. I've never seen anything like this. I was in total shock. And I remember the incident, it kind of like flashed back to me and I'm like, I can't believe that this man um, actually took the cheeseburger from me. I, I was not sorry that I did it because generosity is generosity. But it, it illustrated to, to me how Paul in his mind is, he has a lot of money. You see, it's a trust fund that, that goes back generation, generation, and generation. He, he will, him and his children and his children's children will never fall for anything because they, they, they have this, this trust that will continue to take care of them. Yet, I was living larger than them. And therefore, they were not in flow. He was not in flow. He was not abundant. He was in poverty consciousness. And, and that's what we have to walk away from when we exist in a state of constantly thinking about lack and perpetually um, worrying about not having and perpetually concerned about no animal on the planet does this. 
They don't need to do this, except for maybe um, a chipmunk during right before winter, they store food for the winter, or a um, bear would, would eat more wind on their body weight because they're going to hibernate. But for the most part, you don't, you don't notice this in nature because they know that the food is going to be there. There is a trust. There is a kind of like um, a surrender to uh, the belief that the, perpetually they will be taken care of by the higher powers. And they are not concerned that they are not going to have and they're going to be uh, uh, abandoned and they're going to be lost. And therefore, this idea of hoarding, of holding things back, of trying to, uh, you know, there is that, that there is that that thing on on um, uh, um, on um, um, in the Bible of Joseph interpreting for Pharaoh the um, um, the the dream of the seven year of of riches is in the seven years where there was going to be no money, right? And if in an instance like this, when you have a prediction and you know something about that's going to happen. Prudent planning is okay. There's no reason why you can't say you have seven years of abundance and there's going to be seven years of famine that I shouldn't, you know, store things and prepare for the famine. Okay, there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, but there's, it's a different thing to exist in in poverty consciousness, to constantly be thinking about not having. Okay, and therefore you cannot, and, and not only that, but you're, you're being harsh to yourself. You're being deliberately, um, um, uh, you know, it's a state of lack in your mind. And this is the question we all need to ask ourselves. Do I exist in lack? Where in my life, uh, where, in what aspect of all my life am I in lack? Am I in lack of love? I am I in lack of knowledge? Am I in lack of uh, prosperity? Am I in lack of money? Where is it that I'm in lack? Because to the flow, where, the point where which all of this is coming from, it's the same. It's energy. And the energy is about abundant giving. And if, you're, if you cannot receive uh, also with flow and abundantly receive, you're blocked somewhere. And if you block, for example, love, if you block your capacity to receive money, if you block your capacity to receive knowledge, your capacity to receive wisdom, your capacity to receive light and uh, healing from God, you can begin to block everything else because it's one major artery. So, so there's a lot to unpack, okay? It's not just about money. Okay, when you live in fear and a lack of fear, fear that creates lacks of or a perception of lack of money, of wisdom, or you know, and in your head you're constantly seeing yourself separated from. Uh, again, for the longest time until I had the conversation with Georgie recently, uh, about two months, a month and a half ago, when he began to say, "Lash, I, I don't see myself separated. I have rich clients." And they're asking me all the time about their money, etc. He said, I don't see myself separated from that money. It's not their money. It belongs to Lashmi. And since Lashmi exists in me, it's my money. And when I am helping them through the feng shui or whatever else I'm doing to manage the money, it's my money I'm managing. I'm not disconnected to it. So how many of us can say that about our employer? That the money that we're managing for them the money that we are you know, dealing with them, that you realize in your consciousness, it's not their money. It belongs to, to that source. And when you're doing whatever it is that you're doing, you're getting that connection to that source. It doesn't belong to the company or to the individual. Remove the individual out and see source in this all the time. And if you can do this, you will, you will literally be golden. Everything in your life will be miraculous. It's not the person or the individual. Stop making it personal. Stop personalizing it. That it's the corporation, it's the company, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Of course, we're going to live in ethics with ethics and integrity. You're not going to try to put it in your pocket because you think it belongs to you. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying that when you're dealing with it, 
what consciousness are you in? Do you see yourself outside of it? Or do you see yourself as being part of it? And that you're equally and as of right that that money also belongs to you and at any point it can be in your pocket. Any questions, any comments? Okay. Yes. Esther, Bobby, you wanted to say something? No. What? Did you guys wanted to say anything? I thought you did. I heard something. Overheard something. No. Oh, Bobby, you wanted to say something. Um. I'm, I'm a witness to what you're saying, and I'm trying very hard to. Uh, we're, we're hearing you very faintly in the background. Could you speak a little bit louder? Oh, sure. Um, I am fully trying to, not trying, but I just to say, don't say trying. <laughs> I am. Witnessing and truly uh, couldn't find my best, not trying, but <laughs> to connect to this. And, I, I, and I'm really, truly in health, I'm really connected to that abundance. But other areas I, I have to work on. Too. All right, all right. Yes, 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 yes. And we have to acknowledge that, that, that maybe in health, we are okay with it, but in other aspects of our life, we need to, we need to do better and, and stop. And, and, and you don't realize this, is that in your consciousness, there's a part of you that see yourself outside of the, the flow. The people who are, you know, who are able to buy everything that they want and they have no issue and you're concerned about, do I have enough to pay for this? Are, what's the difference between you and them? It's not the money in the bank. It's the money in the bank is, is the final, it's the precipitate, but there is an awareness, a consciousness, and it's that consciousness that we, we are, we're lacking connection to. When we think as of right that we deserve to have this, this is ours, and as, as if it was an entitlement. And when, we, when you exist in that state, it will come to you. It will flow. It will flow. And that's what I'm trying to do to get everyone to, 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 you know, all of us to understand that, that we need to allow this flow to come in. We need to allow this flow to come in. Yeah, can I just hop in with a, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, go again. Uh, I'm trying to wrap my head around whether I see myself as part of the flow or as outside the flow. Um, not totally sure, but if one were in the flow, does that mean that one has already resolved all of the barnacles, all of the things that are uh, in, in hidden places subconscious or unconsciously, or can you still be engaged in, in those traps or those blockages and be in the flow? Okay, for me, it's, a, it's like a sine wave. There are days where I am in the flow. There are the moments when I'm not, I'm disconnected. Uh, there are days where I feel the lack and I feel like I'm outside of it. There are other days where, and I've been working very hard in keeping my awareness in that flow, okay? As of late, I'm, I'm so aware of this. I'm, I've been working on this because I know this year, it, that's, that would be the test for, for, for the planet. Uh, uh, and so I, I need to keep my awareness on the opposite side of it, which is to connect to abundance and flow and to know that I'm deserving of it. 
it doesn't mean that at the moment the root system of the uh, old program were not going to show up. It means that they show up and I'm going to have to deal with it and dig through it and do the same listening, be silent, connect to it, find out what the root cause, the need. And it's the typical thing that we usually do, right? So for you to actually uh, unplug finally and ask for a transcendental way to deal with this and, and realize that it's all the same. It's all the same. But I, I, if I'm, if I'm, if I'm, Okay, the best way I can say this to you is that when I feel really connected to that flow, I feel immortal. That's the best way I can describe it. I feel like, like chi or prana coming from the entire universe is moving into me. Okay? And I feel powerful, I feel strong, and I feel connected to all kind of benevolence and goodness but it's pouring into me, okay? And when I'm in that state of awareness, I feel um, like I am invincible, but I don't remain in that state all the time. You see what I'm saying, Janice? Exactly, so exactly. So it's um, on and off. Your connection with abundance is on X number of hours, maybe a day and off the other part. So this flow must be stopping and starting then as a result. Absolutely. Absolutely. Because if we were in that flow, we would be immortal. Absolutely. So you cannot, pardon me. Sorry. Go ahead. I was going to say, oh, trying to paint a, paint a happy face on an empty gas tank isn't going to work either to try to convince yourself that you're immortal, or connected to this wonderful source of, of flow and abundance, uh, if you still have issues that are underneath. Okay, let me put it to you this way. Every time I am in that state, some miraculous and impossible financial thing happens for me. In a way, completely unexpected. Hmm. Okay, so it it comes despite that we know that there are issues that we haven't dealt with. It still comes what we're, we're working on dealing with. Let's say put it that way. So the flow of whatever abundant need is there does come even in spite of those apparent blockages. No, what I'm saying is this that the blockages are there. When I'm aware of this, when I see myself, because I'm to, to give you a recent example, when Georgie had that conversation with me and said, I'm not disconnected to my client's money. I, I it, all, the, the, first of all, the money is not theirs. It doesn't belong to them. It doesn't mm -hmm. belong to Jeff Bezos, to the royal family. It does, it's not theirs. It belongs to Lashmi. Yes. And but because it belongs to Lashmi and Lashmi is a universal principle that exists in me, it belongs to me. And the moment he said this, something clicked inside of me. It's not that I didn't know this intellectually. I knew this. But the moment he said this, it, it, when he said, I'm this guy, I, I, when one of my clients asked me to help them, you know, with a feng shui for, for a property that was worth $40 million, he said, it wasn't their money. I knew in my heart, it's not, it's not their money. It and the moment he said this, I'm like, oh my God, I'm always seeing myself outside of this. Like if I'm helping somebody with it, I, I'm disconnected to it. It's not me. I don't, I, I, I'm not part of this flow. So the moment I made that correction and I, and I for the next few days, I, I, I begin to, out of nowhere, I was blessed with a grant that was unexpected. Now I have to tell you prior to even get to that point, this is two weeks later I realized this. It, it had been mailed to me, I didn't even realize it. Now, now I have to tell you, but for that period of time, I felt connected to health, to joy and to happiness, you know, which I had never felt before. Or, or I haven't felt in a long time. I begin to remember I begin to connect and communicate to people in a very different way. Because one of the things that happen when you're in flow, 
you begin to be also very charitable with your giving because you're giving from source now. You don't, you're not, when you're in lack, you, you, you select how you give because you, you begin to see your resources as being limited. And I mean by that, not money, but conversation, kindness, uh, being caring, being loving. And all in a matter of two weeks, because I was focusing on this every day, it changed for me. And the end result is that it wasn't a big, um, a big thing. It was something very small. All of a sudden, something very small gave me confirmation that when I'm in that flow and that energy begins to flow through me, it unblocks a whole bunch of things, including my finances. So would you say that because you had um, discovered or, or found this feeling of, of connection, that that resolved any issues that were remaining to be worked on so that the, the abundant- it, it, it didn't resolve anything, everything, uh, Janice. No, I, mean, okay. I, didn't, okay. I didn't cross a barrier all of a sudden, it's all, you know, down, anyway, downhill, I, you know. I didn't, oh, I'm, I'm not there, okay? What I can say to you is that there were many dreams that led to this. In the course of the dream work I've been doing, I've been having a lot of dreams, talking to people that I know, rich client, that, and, 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 and my subconscious mind was leading me to this because I, over the past six months, I've been having many dreams of clients who have trust fund and me talking to them and realizing, sensing that I, I shouldn't be outside of this, okay? I, I, I'm, um, I've had many experiences that were connect, uh, in my dream world and were connected to that. And uh, seeing myself in dream world being in a very opulent setting and, and, and so on and so forth. And this, so when Georgie mentioned this, it was for me, I was prepared because of all the amount of dream work that had been done for the past six months connected to that blockage or that, that lack uh, of consciousness. And for me, it's like a door that I kicked in, okay? And I'm, I'm still working and moving my way through it, but the door is certainly kicked in where I'm seeing myself in a completely different light. Now, think about it for a second. You may have had struggles, and I'm, and, and, and I'm, and I'm going to bring it to money because money is the thing that people, that's the most concrete to us, although it's very crass and, and it's more than just money. Uh, uh, but God has always taken care of you, no matter what, no matter how dire your situation is, was, uh, where you felt that you were about to be abandoned and lost and, and you know, uh, thrown to the side and all that. And somehow, magically, something always happened to make sure that that death didn't happen. Whatever struggle you're having right now, God is capable of creating that same miracle for you right now. What's blocking it, it's the kind of inner conversation you have in your head. You're the one creating the limit, clipping your own wings. And the idea is to have a different inner conversation and to realize that flow, abundance, and prosperity is something else. And if we can do this, then, then we can begin to unblock a lot of things. Yeah? Yes. Can I say something? Oh, sure, is it a sure. good time? This reminds me of, I've been doing some mental exercises too, since you mentioned it last Sunday. <clears throat> and um, and it reminds me of the movie, um, you, you know that movie, it's an old movie, Gone with the Wind? Yes. I remember I watched that movie when I was a young girl, a teenager um, in Poland. Mm -hmm. We went to the movies and I remember because it was such a long movie. <laughs> yes. And, but I remember how 
I was fascinated with her, her strength and everything she was able to do. And also um, his, his role and his interest enough, his take on abundance was that, uh, you know, at the worst of times, whether it's financial or war, you know, it, it was a war for them at the time. Uh, he managed, he, he managed, it was um, to make a profit. Mm -hmm. And so, so he took advantage of the situation and where everybody was struggling, he was, he made, he will, he, that's what allowed him to become rich. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, on one hand, you know, I wouldn't want to be a bootlegger, you know, <laughs> But the point is, even without trying to be a bootlegger, you, you, you can still have the same mentality. Mm -hmm. You just need to find, you know, like for me, for example, I was just thinking to the extent what you said is that like a lot of what I do, it's, it's, it's whether it's tough times or easy times, life goes on. Mm -hmm. People need to live, people need to eat. There's always some sort of service that people need. Mm -hmm. And often when this crisis, even if they lasted for years, yeah. you know, eventually people adjust and life goes on. People get married, people move, people have families, people have kids. Sooner or later, life just goes on. And if, you, if there's something, for me, it was like, you know, I was like, I was like, I, I'm, I'm part of that flow. The services that I provide, they, they're part of that flow. They're part of that life, that, that life services that goes on, whether it's tough time or, or easy times. Mm -hmm. so, so all that together kind of reminded me that and there's not so much uh, whether it's up or down, it's more about being flexible uh -huh. because sometimes it's just a matter of being more flexible. I'll give you another example. There was a time where the coal miners were struggling, they were out of work. And, and at the same time, the renewal few, uh, industries, the re renewal uh, energies were short um, of workers. And at first, you know, there was no training. Some people would retrain themselves. Eventually, companies started paying people, those that were willing to get training and maybe shift from coal mining to wind energy, you know, or whatever was available in the area. So, and some people took advantage and retrained themselves and find new jobs, better jobs, healthier jobs. And some people just, just refused. Mm -hmm. They were like, they were stuck in their minds. They were stuck in their beliefs. And they said, if we cannot mine in, then we're not doing anything else. Mm -hmm. So it seems like it has a lot to do also with flexibility and being, being, being um, willing to maybe change, change a little bit how you go about things but we should be able to find some sort of connection to that flow and feel somehow part of it, whether it's, uh, you know, tough times or not so tough. Yeah, the, the, the thing, what you're saying, it's, I don't know if, it's, if I would equate it to flexibility as much as a shift in consciousness, okay? Yeah, that's true. Meaning, because it's not a question of being flexible. It's a question of having a different awareness and saying to yourself, "I am connected to this abundance and flow, and and I'm gonna, I'm gonna, and this is my opportunity mm -hmm. to change and to to plug myself into what I see as being the future." Right. Yes, that's true. I mean, at this point, <clears throat> based on what you taught us, yes, it, it's more like seeing yourself part. It's a change in consciousness and seeing yourself as part of that flow. Yeah. And I and I I think we all I think we've most of us have done it previously as well. 
you know, doing this work and adjusting our lifestyles and, and schedule and prioritizing, we just maybe didn't necessarily look at it this way. And now it's kind of a little more, um, I guess um, it, maybe it's going to need to stand out a little more. I have to tell you that the recent experience, and, and I had an, again, euphoric moments for the past two weeks of, of like uh, where I felt connected again, a sense of literally like I'm connected. It's very hard to, to put it into words because it's not, it's a feeling. It's not, mm -hmm. when, when I read the book, uh, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, he was talking about this and I never understood it. I read that book so many times. I never right. got it. Right. And until Georgie said this, I never got it up until that point. I've read that book so many mm -hmm. times. And part of it also, it wasn't what Georgie said at that moment. Georgie was the final drop. I had yeah. been dreaming. There were all these dreams that were leading me into that awareness to awaken me. Okay? Yes, yes. And, and I agree because, uh, I'm sorry, I'll let you finish. And what happened is that once, once that, that, that moment happened, it was big for me. And I, 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 I kept on every day during my meditation connecting to that awareness, that flow, that abundance. That, that everything belongs to one source. All the abundance, all the gift, all the benevolence, everything belongs to that one source. Whether it is money, whether it is health, whether it is knowledge, whether it belongs to one source. And that source exists in me. It's my right. It exists in me. I belong to it. I'm not outside of it. It, be it belongs to me. And I did this. And when finally I was able to acknowledge and uh, the document that gave me this small solace was sent to me several days before, but I, I was not prepared to see it. The envelope was sitting on my desk. And when I finally opened it, I saw it, I started crying. Right. I was so shocked. I started crying. Mm -hmm. Because I realized that the, the universe, again, out of, in the most unexpected ways, Right. Some miraculous thing shifted to precipitate to prove to me physically in this real world that what you were feeling was not just energy, but it's manifested now something physical. Right, it's it's for real. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, well, for, I mean, Pierre, this is a powerful reminder to me because you know it's about stepping out in life and allowing and trusting. And the solutions are always there. You know, I've experienced that in my life. You know, you, you don't know. You just, you just trust and you move forward. Mm -hmm. And life itself, you know, brings it all together. Mm -hmm. And... Um, um, you know, it, it doesn't matter what the challenge is. You know, you just uh, trust. You know, it's kind of like the faith of the mustard seed, you know, to move the mountains. And, and you know, uh, you don't know how they're going to happen. Uh, but somehow, miraculously, or not so miraculously, because they say, you know, the earth, uh, you know, the universe is there. And for every every issue you see, the solution is already there. Yeah. And 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 you know, if we just step out and and in that life flow, you know, you just gotta step out. You don't have to have a solution. Just mm -hmm. step out and see the solution happening. Mm -hmm. And as you step out and see the solution happening. There it is, some kind of way. It might not be exactly the way you would have wanted it to be, but it is a solution to yeah. move you forward or to give you more insight about how to move forward. So, you know, it's, it's a very powerful uh, reminder, affirmation, uh, confirmation, you know, about you know, it, it's all there and it's all ours. Yes. 
Uh, you're so right. You're so right because it happened in the most unexpected ways. As I said, that they, I had taken the mail out. I put it on my desk and I didn't look at it for three or four days. And when I looked at it, I'm like, this gift was, was given to me four days ago and I didn't pay. And I started crying. Because I, the, 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 there, was a, there was a physical manifestation for me when, when in fact I have been living in that awareness or at least to, for the past two weeks or I tried to, for several hours a day, I was existing in that opulence. I saw myself mm -hmm. as being opulent. Not some sort of like law of attraction kind of thing, but, but more than that, trust and faith that I belong. I'm not outside of it. I belong. And I'm deserving of receiving. I'm not disconnected to it like I've, I saw myself before. Because the problem with me is that when Georgie said this, I realized I've been disconnected. And I, I, I saw myself as being outside. Everybody is on, in, is on the stress more on the Bentley or, or whatever, the bus and the train. And I'm, I'm outside. I'm on the, on the sidewalk. And the moment I made that connection that I was in it, 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 it created a change by showing me, keep going. This is the omen. Keep going, Pierre. You can create much more. This was nothing. You can create much more. Keep going. It, as you said, Esther, it is a huge and powerful reminder. Yeah, it is. because it was unexpected. It was completely unexpected. And again, uh, we're always talking about money because that's the only way we can, uh, in the physical world or physical thing, to show that there is opulence, but it's not money. As I said, for me, it's energy. It's a sense again of being connected to the flow of immortality and sensing that you're, you're literally in the center of everything that's good and benevolent in the universe. You're in the center of it. And if you can exist in that flow, everything that's good will come to you. And, and not only that, because the way this flow comes in, as it comes in, you become more charitable and more giving. What happened during that period of time, and even now, is that I, everywhere I go, I talk to people in a different way. In my, in, down the street from me, all these doormen, they are my friends, they're all my buddies. I'm talking to them. Everybody on the street, I, I'm, I'm relating in a completely different way than I did before. Whereas before I was guarded, I was trying to be invisible, I was trying to I don't want anybody to see me. I was disconnecting myself. Whereas now I am, I'm seeing myself in flow. I am, I'm not afraid. I don't exist in fear anymore. I'm not afraid. And I trust that the universe will only bring me goodness and benevolence because I am connected only to goodness and benevolence. And when you exist in that state, uh, again, out of nowhere, your needs are going to be met in the most unexpected, miraculous, almost like, you know, shocking ways. Well, all of a sudden you're walking around and, and all of a sudden something falls in your lap. Or, or it could be an opportunity, a phone call, somebody telling you, why don't you do X, Y, Z, blah, 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 because in the moment you do it, poof, it's in your hand. There's an old saying that what God is giving you, no one can take away. Except, and I will put that one caveat, you have to be ready to accept it. Because a lot of time, God is giving us a lot of things. And we have so much shame and undeservedness that we're, we're saying to God and to the universe, I'm not ready for it. I don't want it right now. Because I choose now to be disconnected and to suffer.
Now, the problem, the issue is that where in your life right now, what aspect of this abundant flow, which is a giant, you know, umbrella, what, as, what part of that is, are you disconnected to wisdom? Are you disconnected to knowledge? Are you in lack of health? Are you in lack of money? Are you in lack of opportunity, joy? What, what part of this are you disconnected to? What kind of inner conversation or dialogue you're having in your head? You know, because if you, if you all the time are saying to yourself, when, when I, you know, instead of saying, for example, I'm buying this, blah, 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 because let's say it's, a, it's a, something you want in the store. I'm, I'm buying this, blah, 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 and so on and so forth, even though you don't have the money and you don't know where the money is going to come from. I'm, gonna, I'm getting this. Instead of saying, when I come into my fortune, when I make my blah, 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 I wish I had the money to be able to afford this. That's a different conversation. It's saying, I am in lack. I'm disconnected. The point is that you have to understand that you already have it. It has not physically manifested like a wad of green in your in your, your hand or in your credit card on your account. I give you the example uh, 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 some weeks ago about how one day I had dreamt about a number and it showed up at the ATM in, the, in my bank account. And because I was scared and in lack, afraid, et cetera, I, I, I said it was a mistake and all of these things. And I was having all of this internal conflict. I stare at the machine. I'm, I'm like, I, I need to go get the bank teller. I tell them something is wrong. I, I had all this stuff going in my head and I can't solve the transaction. I had another friend of mine who again saw an amount much less than what I had, but he saw an amount that was not there and is uh, uh, much higher than what he had before. He accepted it and he, he redrew $20 from it. But in his mind, it's mine. Yes, it's mine. The God is giving this to me. And he redrew some money from it. And the moment he did this, he, the amount was there. He spent it. No one ever came from the bank to tell him that it, it was incorrect. What I'm saying is that spirit is completely capable of connecting you to that kind of flow because everything is being done electronically now. Everything. So in the event that you go to the ATM and you're, you, you're seeing, you had a sense in your dream time that you're coming, that your fortune is coming, and you see a big change, withdraw some, a few, a few hundred dollars, a hundred dollars from it, just withdraw some money to, to lock it into your, your own uh, physical reality, lock it into your physical reality, withdraw it. And once you've done that, and, and know in your heart of heart that this comes from God, this was a gift from the divine. And the moment you do that, it will remain for you. And no one will come back to ask you for anything. There is no reason that, that, that any of you listening to me should not be able to participate in this. The only reason is the inner conversation that you're having with yourself and seeing yourself disconnected and outside of that trust and connected to that flow. If you feel undeserving of the abundance and the flow that the universe has, again, that flow is infinite. It's not just a fortune that exists in the planet. And I mean the diamond, the oil, the, all of the mineral resources and, everything, and the green back, the money. It's not just that, it's everything that exists everywhere in the entire universe. That flow is endless. In fact, the fortune that Bezos and all these people have got cannot compare to the kind of thing that exists in there. And I'm talking about physical fortune, but, but also the knowledge, the, 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 the wisdom, the health, the, 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 you know, the, the love, the, the happiness, the joy that all of that can, can bring for you. And if you exist in that awareness and you know it's yours and, and you're, you're connected to it, not, nothing can stop you, nothing.
But Pierre, you, you just reminded me of a, well, I won't give a background, but the song, Yes, Jesus Loves Me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, where it says, I am weak, but he is strong. And, you know, we, we as an individual person, we might feel fragile, but it's important to connect with the vastness of the universe in which we are part of. Mm hmm Yep. 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 Absolutely. Absolutely. We we need we need to I'm sorry, go ahead. I'm sorry. I cut you off. I was just gonna say, and uh, I mean I know a lot of times, you know, when I'm feeling vulnerable and you know. I I just said, you know, I just say, um, you know, I, I, I need your help, you know, uh, yeah. or any, you know, any affirmation to bring in the vastness to support and help me. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I'm 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 with you on that. I, I I completely understand what you're saying. I'm I'm um I I'm I'm so proud that all of us are moving to that awareness because this is the kind of flow and awareness that will shield you from the turbulence that may be coming for the world for this recal recalibration of um, um, uh, of prosperity of abundance and of flow if you're not in that awareness you're going to feel uh, quite a bit of disturbance we all need to work on this and i'm this is an invitation for all of you to move in that, into that awareness. And the other thing, Pierre, I just thought, you know, when you ask, you know, for that guidance and, and that clarity, uh, that solution, uh, it's important just to allow it to and not manage it. Yes. Exactly. You know, I did ask for it and I was not, I was not consciously trying to dictate how it happened. And it happened in the most impossible and miraculous way. Right. In fact, I was shocked. <laughs> exactly. I was so shocked. I was, so, I was in tears. I was in tears. <laughs> Because giving everything that was going on in my life, that was going to take me another two years to get to that level. And all of a sudden, it was gone. That burden lifted like this. And out of this chaos that exists in the world right now. So this is proof for me. The universe is saying, push up. Pedal to the net, to the to, to 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 the metal. Just go all the way down here. You're, you're on the right path. Keep going. Exactly. Any other questions or comments? Um, something came to my mind. This might not be time or place for this, but today, but just in terms of what you mentioned about the banks and the, this 
potential domino effect. I was just wondering if anybody heard where, where the like silver and gold stands. If anybody heard anything new? I I, I haven't heard. Um, I don't know. Uh, the, uh, okay, what I'm hearing is that these these banks were investing. One one of the things was that the treasury, the U.S. Treasury, which is a supposedly safe investment, but again, ten years commitment, right? Five to ten years commitment. Uh, therefore, they don't have the liquidity. It's a liquidity problem, right? Yeah. Right. Uh, but but there was but what they are, the regulators are not saying. There's an article that was written about it. Is that apparently the banks also invested in crypto? They bought Bitcoin. Okay. Yeah. I don't think they invested in gold or or silver, but mm -hmm. um, uh, when I listen to what, very carefully to what I'm saying. When I come into my million, not if, but when, mm -hmm. I will invest in real assets. Yeah. Including gold, including silver, but including, but, but real asset. Yeah. So there is long-term asset and then there is things that you would invest in. This is the way you would divide it into things that will make you li liquid. Meaning if you need to have money in hand to pay for X, Y, Z, you'll be able to access it. Because even if you invest in gold and silver, this is not something you can sell um, overnight. Mm -hmm. Okay? Yeah. So it's still a long-term investment. Well, yeah. if you have, like if you have small denominations, you could use it too. You can use it as a- No, you need, you need to go to a gold, you have to, you have to go to an exchange. That will allow you to exchange the gold or the silver. Are, well, technically, you could pay somebody, you know, also just use it like you would. No, no one will phone. accept it. They, they, you, well, it depends how hard times, you know, if there's super inflation and dollar, it's worth nothing and you can use it as toilet paper, then, you know. <laughs> well, it, 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 there may come a time for this, but right now, the way the market is, you, you, you have to join. Uh, I've done some research on this, okay? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And and you 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 will have to join a certain kind of exchange where you can buy gold future and some, a precious metal for future, where these kind of things can be exchanged, right? Um, um, and of course, the price for gold and silver fluctuate, blah blah blah, and so on and so forth. So you would buy the you know in that exchange, but I would want to also own the actual physical gold and silver as well. Right, that's what I meant. Yeah. Right, but but again, it, it, we are not at a time right now where you're going to go to a store and you're going to put a piece of gold and silver and somebody's going to give you money for it. We're not at that. No, point. no. I mean, this will be like if you want something to have, like as a, you know, like emergency something. You know? As an investment for the for future time. Yes. Yes. Also, something to keep at home instead of cash, you know, instead of cash in the mattress, because you know, I was people who had used to put cash under the mattress and then they became worthless. So. No, I understand what you're saying, Ursula. I, I get what you're saying, but what I'm saying is that it's a everything is about timing, yeah. Okay, uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, because uh, I've done research on this, on bu actually buying gold pieces and coins and all that, uh, mm -hmm. and it fluctuates with the market. You can buy something for fifty, one hundred dollars, five hundred dollars, and you know there are various ounces of you know depending on how much an ounce uh, the the gold or the silver is worth. There are multiple places you can buy them from, from Swiss, from, from all the uh, places in America, places all, uh, in Asia. There are multiple places where you can buy it from. But what I'm saying is uh, there's also an exchange. I can send you links to all of this stuff because I've done the research. Where, where you, you, you can go on the exchange and mm -hmm. you buy the future for, you know, um, for all of these um, precious metal by investing money into that, into that. And then you hold in the exchange, but there it's very easy to unload. It's like being in the stock market. I'm ready to sell, sell, and then you get the money in your bank. Right. 
Okay, okay, no, that's fine. I just wonder if you heard anything new. No, that, nothing in that from that end. No, nothing. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank Not you. No problem. And and uh, curiously, by the way, it was Nixon who um um took the Federal Reserve away from uh, gold backing. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Any other questions or comments on anyone before we take a break? All right, let's take a five minute break and then we'll do a closing meditation on the back end, five minutes.
Take a very deep and slow breath. And as you inhale and exhale deeply and slowly. Allow the universal life force that permeates everything to enter into your lungs. Keep breathing deeply and slowly. your soul and your awareness drop in the middle of your chest. Please forgive me. I love you. And I let go. Please forgive me. I love you. And I let go. Keep breathing deeply and slowly. your mind and your heart sync with each other. Keep breathing deeply and slowly. And realize that you can perceive all around you, 360 degrees. And notice what you noticed. Listen as if the more than 50 trillion cells that exist in your body had ears. Pick 
become aware of uh, any lack separation disconnection to flow that may exist in you. deeply and slowly. And become a witness ways am I disconnected
perpetual renewal and miraculous flow. This is an illusion, a lie. For divine souls, is an endless, infinite, source of abundance, flow, prosperity, healing, knowledge, blessings, and benevolence. I am as of right connected to that perpetually renewal source of abundant living. I am endlessly supported, happy, joyous, healthy, rich, prosperous, and glowing with radiant benevolence coming out from every pore of my being and every fiber of my consciousness. Thank you. 
Let this endless and perpetually renewal flow. Give me access. And the remembrance of abundant living, receiving, giving in every cell of my body. Let all cellular memories of lack, of disconnection, of blockages, of limits, be transmuted into flow, into access, into surrender, and into endless renewal. Thank you. 
Thank you for the blessings. I accept the gifts and I receive with gratitude. Thank you for the blessings. I accept the gifts and I receive with gratitude. Thank you for the blessings. I accept the gifts and I receive with gratitude. Take a very deep and slow breath. And whenever you feel ready, <clears throat> you can open your eyes. Well, thank you, Pierre. Thank you for helping us connect. I do feel that that was a successful venture into that flow. I appreciate it. You're welcome, Janice. You're welcome. Just wanted to add to you, this is breaking news. Um, I was being taxed by my banker, Signature Bank, has been closed by the Fed, by the Fed. Again, for the same reason, contagion uh, from, from liquidity. It's a bank that deals with um, millionaires and billionaires. Um, so they're meeting with the FDIC in the morning. Mm -hmm. So what we were just talking about is literally cutting edge, so relevant to, to the right now. And we need to remain in that awareness so that we don't get scared. Okay. I want to thank all of you for listening to me. Uh, for those of you on Patreon, thank you for um, 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 so your support. Uh, if you're listening to us on YouTube, like this video, subscribe to the channel, please, uh, and share it uh, to increase the algorithm. I would really appreciate it. Sending you my deepest love, and I'll talk to you next week. Thank you so much, everyone. Love Thank you. you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Good night, everyone. Good night.